Hey guys, how are you today? We're going to go over some uh, tools and supplies I think everybody should have once you got into the hobby. Meaning, you know you're going to be doing this um, for the foreseeable future, at least 10 kits, which is a good year um, of building. I, I think you should, uh, you should have these supplies I'm about to show you, um, irregardless of cost. Nothing is ridiculously expensive. But um, I think you should have um, a good portion of what I'm going to show you. And um, we're going to start with uh, the knives. Now, everyone should have a good knife. I like two of them, three of them. I have a bunch because I tested them. But certain ones feel good for certain situations. And um, it depends on your, your hand size. This is a super fat one that I, I reviewed. And sometimes I like to have a good grip depending on what I'm cutting. Um, but overall, I like a, a skinny one like this, a medium size, not too thin. I don't like the thin aluminum ones they make, these, these real thin. Um, I have bigger hands, so uh, uh, either of these, any of these will do. This is from Excel. If you watch my other video, I went through all of them. Uh, I do like this one. This is all rubber, and it just has a good feel to it, and um, I use it the most. And uh, this one's great, too, uh, for the quick release. You pull it. And then you can replace the blade instantly. Check that out. So this is good too. Um, I'll show you these blades in a minute because that's another thing. Choosing the right blade. Uh, I like the standard Exacto number 11. Let me get these out of the way. This is my favorite blade. Everybody should have this blade. In particular, this Exacto Z blade. If you can see, it's got a Z on the blade. Boy, it won't focus. Right here is a little Z. And... Um, I think I found these at Hobby Lobby and my other hobby shop till they stopped carrying them. You, you can't get Exacto at a hobby shop anymore because Rustoleum, who bought, I mean, uh, Rustoleum and Exacto both will only sell to big box stores. So you can only get these at Walmart and uh, Hobby Lobby and the, and the like. Uh, who knows why? And probably on uh, Amazon too, I guess. I haven't had the need to buy any in quite a while. But that's my favorite blade. It's got a gold tone to it. See it? I think they're super sharp. Now, if you can't get them, this is a close second. These are Model Master, which unfortunately have been discontinued also, but there's a ton of them out there. Can you see? It's like a black carbide. I like these two. They're very sharp. I get a couple of kits out of one blade alone. So those are a must. Good blades. I like the number 11. And here's my latest blade. These are from uh, Olfa, the Olfa brand. This is how they come. You see them? They're like a sweep-up design. They're great for taking the nubs off. And I got one in the one I just showed you guys. And you see it? It's, it's, a, it's quite a bit different from the sharp angle of the number 11. You know, it, it's, a, it's a little more delicate for certain situations. So pick and choose. I think you should have two kinds of blades. You don't need more than that uh, for the basic building that we're doing. So... Uh, these are the two I use the most, and um, I think you guys would like these new uh, Ulfa blades. I had to get them on Amazon. I couldn't find them anywhere, but um, they were worth it. They came quick, and um, they, uh, they, ju they just work great. They're great. So uh, that's the first one, a good knife and uh, a good knife holder and good knife blades. All right? Now, I think everybody should have a cutting pad. Um, I used, I used to have a large one, but uh, it was a bit overkill, so I moved it over, and uh, I got a smaller one here. Now, this is not expensive, $7.99. I think this is another Hobby Lobby special with the coupon. It was like 5 bucks. You, you can't beat it. Um, let's open it now. And just put this baby right out. All right, there we go. It doesn't matter what side. It's universal. Um, you don't have to go too big because of the reason I stated, you know, you really, you, you're only working in this amount of space anyway. And, uh, this is perfect and I can move it when I want to without having to pull the whole desk one that I was using beforehand, you know? So this is a, this is a good one. This is perfect. And I like a black color. Both sides of these are different. I like a dark colored one. Um, it's just my preference. Um, but the, the, the green ones are also very popular, but, uh. This will get you by. This also, they had this in green, too, over there, also. So, you take your choice. I think the price was the same. So, we'll pull that out of here for now. And uh, we'll move on. Okay. I think the next thing everybody has to have is a good nipper. You 
can tell when I use a lot of them. Um, I don't have my God hands. Um, I think a friend has them or lost them or something. Uh, it doesn't matter because I like a particular one here a lot more. But I do have a God hands coming in. So um, actually we'll review that when they come in. We'll compare them to my favorites. So uh, these are my side cutters. This is from Trumpeter. This is from Tamaya. Tamiya. There you go. And these are my favorites, the Micro Marks. My local store now has these for $21.99. What a price. These are easily worth what they get uh, for the God Hands at $50. Bucks, easily. And I'll show you in a second. And these are my $5. It's my $5 uh, Mr. Hobby ones. Let me see if I can find the package for you guys. Oh, yeah, here it is. They come in this little package like this. You've seen my other video i done on it. There we go. Mr. Easy Nipper. That's what they're called. And um, I was cutting them off the sprue, and then I realized I was doing it wrong. Here's how it works. These are five bucks. These basic nippers are five bucks. So here's what you do. Again, I did a video on this, but we'll go with we'll go here with this again because uh, we're going over the tools quickly here. All right, we're gonna take this. We're gonna cut far away as we can with these cheap ones. See the cheap ones? So pull it away. You can even go all the way up if you want and take the whole sprue out with these things. That's how strong they are. All right, so we gotten in that close. See it? I hope I can do this good on the camera again. I'm working with a different uh, angle on my camera for this. Now we're gonna get these $5. They look like nail clippers, but they're not. All right, we're gonna come in. And we're gonna take off the rest. Slide this piece in, get it close. And there it is. Let's get this in the trash. And there you go. Look at this. And get this to focus for us. Look at that. It's beautiful. It's it's smooth as silk. It's as good as these expensive ones. You know? I mean it's a two-step process. However, you're in at ten bucks. These were five bucks. These were five bucks. I got these at Spray Gunner in Florida. I think he still has them in stock. You get these anywhere. These are five bucks anywhere. So that's a two-step process, but a great process once you're done. Look at that. It's perfect. So that's a two-step process that gets you in cheap to get high-quality results. Um, with these, these are my go-to favorites right here, Micro Marks. Let's see if we can get this on the camera good. We're going to go on, from the bottom. I'm trying to get it because the camera is killing me here. That's it. It cuts right through like nothing. Now, I like to trim further than that. You know, I just do. But it's, uh, it's, as, it's as, good as, as good as any of, as I've used. I mean, I had a $50 pair, a $70 pair of God hands. That was better. But it was $70. You know, these are, these are 21 at my buddy's store. I think they're 24 or something on the website for Micromark. Uh, pick these up. You will not be sorry. It's a year now, and they're still cutting beautifully. They have the stopper here. It's a single blade. It's just phenomenal. It's it's great. So without going in, you know, I've already done a whole video on it, but uh, um, go check that out. But this is part of a main video where we're going to go over everything little by little. So let's get these out of the way. That's your nippers. All right. There we go. All right. On to the next tweezers. You can get away cheap. I have uh, several Tamiya ones here. And I, I love them, but I mean, I, I, I had a chance to get them wholesale. I have a wholesaler's license, so I'm, I was just able to get them wholesale. Here's the Tamiya. Here's the Tamiya. And one of these is a Squadron, right? Here's a Squadron pair. Great company also. Stainless steel, anti-magnetic. You know, pick which ones you like, but you should go a couple. You know, a very fine one, and you're going to need a heavy-duty one like this. This one works flat. See it? So, uh... They're not cheap. One of these was like 10 bucks. One was almost 20 but I use them every build. You use them every build like you do the nippers. Now, these are special. These are these are uh, decal tweezers, meaning they, um, they're made specifically for decals so they don't tear or rip. Can you see how it grips? See how fine it is? That's so you can grab a decal. Uh, I can't go through my decals, but you know when you're holding them, see how flat? It's just the it's just the way it is. It's it's just perfect. These even these come in at a bit of an angle. These are more for pieces of the of the kit. This is for the actual paper of the decal. You know, 
So, I mean, that's why I got these. I had a chance to get these uh, at a good price, too. But um, it it's, depends how, how into the hobby you are. You're going to get that detailed um, to get a pair of tweezers just for your decals. You don't have to. Again, you could probably find these. These are uh, these are bigger Tamiya ones. They probably do a purpose. You can use it for that. But see how big it is to get the smaller decals. That's why I went with the smaller one, too. But I recommend at least two tweezers of different sizes. And uh, must own. Good pair of tweezers. Um, you're going to need them on every kit. So I recommend two different sizes, good quality tweezers. You don't necessarily need the decal ones, but as far as a decal goes, I do recommend uh, a decal scissor, which I'm going to show you in a second. Okay, let's uh, move on here. Tape. Uh, you know what? I mentioned the scissor. Let's bring it up. All right, this is my decal scissor. Now these are uh, specially made for uh, decals. They're super fine and delicate in their cutting, and I can get in tight spots. So let's look at some decals here. Maybe we can go over a quick cut here. Oh, my decals. Look at all these things. Oh, here's one that's open. All right, I cut with these. All right, let's see if we can get the black background. Now, these are tiny little circles. See, I used it in one of my kits. Now, look at how close I can get in there. You know, I'm, I can get right in uh, just to the circle that I want, you know. Hold on. There we go. And it cuts very, very, very fine right to it, almost like an X-Acto blade cutting right through it. So uh, these are great. Um, again, this is fringe. <laughs> this is fringe stuff. But if you're going to be building a lot of kits, um, the more tools, the better. It, it's just how it goes. What you want to do is maybe if you want to collect all this stuff, you make a checklist. And every time you order a kit, you get another tool, you know, and you just start to add it up. And then before you know it, you have all the tools that I have here um, in your, uh, on, your on your bench, you know. All right, so next, uh, tape. I recommend tape, good masking tape, in particular the Tamiya or Mr. Hobby. Yeah, they're both basically the same. If you, whatever one you guys can get, grab it. You know, I have a bunch of tape because I, I I just grab it every time I'm at the store because it's three bucks. It's good to add in. These uh, new one and two uh, millimeter Tamiya's just came out. Look how skinny. So I'm going to try some uh, pinstriping uh, before I airbrush on my, one of my Zaku's. I'm going to do all the edges with it instead of the decals. See it? And that's a little bit bigger. Those just came out. And this is the bigger size. I keep them in the pack. Because you don't need a dispenser every time, but if you do, you get... I bought the dispenser for this big one, and when it runs out, you can just replace it. So uh, you can use the dispenser. Actually, you can buy two different sizes, is what I recommend, because it comes with a full roll. It's going to last you a good half a year. And then uh, as you reload it, and you just buy these at three or four bucks and pop it in, and, and you'll always have the dispenser, you know, just like a regular dis uh, tape dispenser. And this stuff is great. I use it uh, quite a bit. I, all, all you guys I know use tape. And this is a special kind of Tamiya tape. This is for curves. This is very elastic, rubber-like. And uh, it even says it, you know, masking tape for curves. So, yeah. so this is good, too, if you want to do it on a car or uh, even, even one of the Gundams around the arms. This is the stuff. You can stretch it and pull it over edges. Really good to have. And, uh, again, not too, not too expensive. It's just tape, you know. It's good to have. Uh, you buy a roller tool every time you hit the hobby shop or you order online, boom, you get yourself a whole bunch of uh, masking tape uh, on your desk, you know. Uh, let's see what else. So, uh, mixing cups. There's all kinds of mixing cups. I think these were from uh, these are from Trumpeter, I believe, and they even came with these lids. So even if you're going to mix and use it later on, look at that. You can seal off the paint, and it stays in your little mixing cup. So that's a great idea. It comes with a bunch of them, and it has a pour spout. So if you're mixing, and you're going to pour right into your cup of your airbrush, boom, this is this is perfect for that. And I also have these tin ones. These came with a couple of stirrers, metal stirrers, which are also good, all right? And um, it came with the two cups and two stirrers, two, kind, two ends. Metal stirrers are good. You're going to reuse them over and over again. You can wipe them off perfectly, just dip them into its thinner, and you can clean them right off and use them forever. I also use uh, a lot of coffee stirrers, and uh, I'll go through that in a second. But stirring cups are good to have. Reusable, anyway. Now, let me show you, speaking of stirring cups, 
these are wonderful. Uh, I got these at a medical supply store. I went nuts looking around for them, and uh, that's where they had them. And there's two kinds. And let me get the other kind, the one that I like even more. These are my backups. These are my favorites. But these were cheaper because they have a nub inside them. Let me show you what I mean. Let's grab that stirrer. All right, you see the nub? Watch this. It's right there. See it? And, and when you stir it, you, you're not getting a smooth stir. You know, and, and the paint ends up splashing out, and it would drive me nuts. Um, I still use them, but... Uh, I went back and the guy says, "Oh, you want these uh, better ones? They're like epoxy cups, but they have them at the at the medical supply store. That's where I found these. And look, no nub, no nub. This is what you want. And you got They'll know what you mean when you ask them. They'll know what you mean. You don't want the nub inside. If you guys have a medical supply store, I live in the tiny, tiny state, and I happen to have a, a medical <laughs> supply store in my own city too, which is which is rare." But that's where I got them. Now, speaking of medical supply, I also got these there. Now, these are good mixing bottles. Beautiful when you make a, your custom blends. I made a, a custom blended, um, uh, one, of my, one of my videos, I showed you a custom blended uh, uh, white primer from, uh, from the Mr. Primer stuff. I used their white base and their white surfacer, and I combined it. And then I cut the label off and taped it on here. And that's how I got it. That's from this one right here. See it? So I just you just got to shake it up. And look, you don't even have to open it. It's got a resealable top. So that's this one here. These were dirt cheap. You buy them uh, individually, as many as you want. Then they have this variety where you just unscrew the top. You know, you fill it up to here. And you just leave it in here permanently. This is your top. And you squeeze it right into your airbrush. This is a pop lid type. I got all kinds because I didn't know which ones I was going to end up liking the most. So I'm still using them. See it? And then you go with that. That works good too. And this is just basically a bigger size uh, of the other one. See that? So if you make your custom blended paints like I did with this, you put them in here, you label it. Beautiful. You don't even have to open up the lid anymore. It's perfect. That, and I'm showing you this because I also got these at the uh, supply store, the uh, medical supply store. Let me put my paint back. All right, I'll show you what else. All right. Um, speaking of jars, let's do jars. All right. These I showed recently at the end of one of my videos. And they're solvent proof because I put in my all clad in this and it works. Look at that with a built in eyedropper and a glass eyedropper on top of it. These are on Amazon. You, you, you can't miss it. You just put it in an eyedropper jar, whatever, how, how I found them. But look at this. And I'll show you what I did. Ugh. That's it. So I took this, uh, I printed the logo, black gloss base, because I use it a ton. And it's in there. And then, like I said, you just open it up, whoop, right into the airbrush. I keep it right next to the airbrush bench where you guys see me uh, spraying all the time. Because I use it so often. I, I, I coat the spoons and whatever else I'm building using this stuff more than any other primer. So this is highly recommended. And let me tell you something. These were cheap. I don't even know if they were 10 bucks for the six of them. Might have been six bucks. I don't know. And um, they came with Prime, so they shipped right away. Let me put this paint back. So that's another recommendation. Uh, as far as uh, if you want to be doing your blends and whatnot. That's the brand. Yesker. But uh, I didn't care what the brand is. I just wanted the, that particular jar, you know. Um, all right, let's move on. Uh, this is what I started using for uh, cleaning my panel lines. You see all the panel lines? And that's a lot of work of uh, cleaning and rubbing. And um, this is a two-process tip right here. All right? These are Tamiya, which I love. Love them. Because they don't, they don't flare up like a Q-tip. And then these are Mr. Hobby, which I found. And this comes with two kinds. It comes with the flat round, and it comes with the pointies. So these are great, too. But I ended up wanting to get some to clean my airbrush. So I wanted to go uh, with these longer ones. And then these are from CVS. Now, I use these to clean the airbrush and whatnot. And these uh, to do both airbrush and these panel line also. Look how fine they are. And on, on another tip, 
I don't have to do it, you know. I use this uh, Zippo lighter fluid. I got at the uh, gas station. That's where I find it in the liquor stores because they still sell cigarettes and lighters there. You put it on there. Lighter fluid works great with the panel lining liquid. Uh, uh, most of them are enamel based, and um, I use the uh, to my own a lot. And boom, that's it. Right off, it comes right off either side, you know, either side. And uh, I also use these for cleaning the airbrush on my tip. Let me show you this. Hard to reach places like this. This protects the needle. So watch this. So you take this out, and I end up with uh, all kinds of dirt inside the cap. So you dip this into your thinner or whatever it is you're using, even if it's an acrylic, and you can see how perfect that fits in there. And you just rotate it, and it cleans it right out every time. Every time. All right? And uh, I've had this for months, this package. It was full. This was a CVS pointed tip applicators. It was in the makeup section. That's where you find it, in the makeup section. And uh, these, let me show you what I got for these other ones. All right, let's get these out of here. Let's get the Zippo lighter fluid out of here. Look at that. I got tons of them. All right. So these were cheap. They might have been 10 bucks, but these are going to last me forever. I keep them in a little container like I keep my eye droppers. And uh, these are a must because if you're panel lining, you got to have them. Don't bother with the Tamiya ones. Just grab these. You get two for one. You can even cut them in half and use them for different types of things. But I have a ton of these things. And uh, came in boxes of 200. They're biodegradable all the way across. So, that's what I recommend. But you've got to have good Q-tips, and I recommend these. All right. Jars. Speaking of jars, you've got to have good jars. The other ones were special for eye-dropping into the airbrush, but these I recommend if you, for your custom paints that you're not necessarily going to airbrush everything. Now, here's one I just did with the Molotov marker. I dumped it into this, and it's staying perfect. You know, and that was these, these little square ones from Tamiya. And these are the nice big round ones. These are the same as their, their paints. Hold on a second. Sorry, guys, I'm behind you. Look at that. See, it's the same jar. Yeah. So they leave it clear so you can see it. There's no label. I guess you can mark uh, your measurements if you're going to mix it. But it stays wonderful in here. Great jars. They're stable. These were, I don't even think this was 10 bucks to get like six of them. Look at that. So I recommend you grab these. It's good to have an extra jar on hand for everything. But this stuff, because it's made for paint, it's it's perfect. You don't have to worry about the seals in them or anything like that. So grab those if you can. Extra jars, very important. All right. Let's move on to something else. Uh, brushes. Let's go to brushes. you got to have good brushes. Ugh. Let me show you my brushes. You know, I airbrush a lot. You got to do a lot of detail work. Uh, I love the Tamiya, and I love the Hobby, the Model Master brand. These are great. They're just great, great. I'm gonna, I'm gonna brush some paint on right now so you guys can see. Yeah, Model Master. Here's a, a bigger one. Yeah, it was eight bucks for this one. So this is a, a much broader. If you're gonna paint like on an airplane wing or something, and this is uh, good for oil, acrylics, and anything. And this is very soft too. And this was $9.99, but they're on sale for the month at Hobby Lobby for half price. So this was five bucks. This one right here. This is a beauty. You know, that's a great brush. So you gotta make sure it says all oil, acrylics, and water colors. You gotta make sure it includes everything. You know, that, that's the way to pick them. You know, you can go really detailed and you can get a nice set of these Tamiya. Look at this, you got three in the package. And I got a real fine one here too for really nice detailing. You know, and, and then, you know, do the eyes and stuff on certain kits. And you can use it to apply your uh, panel liner. You don't have to use the cheap brush that comes with the panel liner. So these are, this is a good value. But these are all individual. And uh, I got these because I, I was really short on brushes. So I just went in and got all these uh, when I could. Look at how fine. <laughs> Look at how fine this one is. you you got to have good brushes. You guys have to have good brushes. You can't get the cheap ones. Look at that. Look at that. That's for, type, that's for painting the bolts and whatnot inside the, the hood of one of my cars. You just dip it in the silver and you just go to town, you know. Good stuff. you got to have good brushes. These are all synthetic or camel hair. They don't leave any lines at all, you know. So I'm going to show you. you got to have good brushes. Make sure you get small, medium, large, and then a super fine one and maybe a super big one. This is uh, 
Let me pull out the thinner for this. This is uh, Aqueous from uh, Mr. Color. All right, we'll just pull out a piece I had ready for you guys. Here we go. All right, you're gonna dip. You can drain off the brush a little bit on the side. And you're gonna go about two coats. And it's just, you can just, the feel of the brush is just awesome. You know, I, I practiced it on a spoon. I do everything on my spoons before I did the video. Look at that. All right. Any air bubbles should disappear. And when you see them, you go over it again. Let it dry a little bit. And you can go over it again. And this is if you're doing a, a, a big kit. You know, if you're going to do a, a lot of guys actually brush paint a lot of their Gundams. They don't have air brushes. So this is what they got to rely on. But uh, this is the brush you want. The Model Master or the Tamiya brushes, I, I love them. There's other ones too, artist brushes too. You're going to pay a little bit more. Some you're going to pay a little bit less. It depends uh, where you go. And um, you want to clean them out right away. This is the thinner that comes with, uh, that comes with, uh, let me show you. I'm using a specific thinner. I don't thin the paint when I airbrush it with this. I use lacquer thinner. You can also clean it with lacquer thinner too. But um, that's it. It's just about clear. So all I do is I get my... Uh, don't ever leave your brush laying like this because when you're done and you're working, you let it, you come out with a bent brush. You don't want it. You watch my other tips video. It's my number one tip. Just put the brush and let it hang straight down. It'll clean it perfectly. You know, I'll clean that off when I'm done after the video. I just want to show you how good those brushes brush, you know. There we go. That's the brushes. All right. Let's move on. Uh, let's see, what do I got here? Files. Let's do some files. All right? You gotta have files. I recommend these squadron files. They also come fat like this too, with the sponge, which is also recommended. One, two, three, we, uh, three uh, grits. And there's also these. You gotta have files, guys. Hold on. Here they are. These little file sticks. Look at these things. You get the, my hobby shop has these in a cup, and you just pick the ones you want. They're dirt cheap really rough you know and then you got 600 grit and 400 grit grit and then this gets in little tiny spots you know i don't want to keep grabbing this piece because it's wet with paint and you know and you can get right in there so that's good too those are fine these are uh this is 10 bucks i think retail yeah these are 10 bucks and look at it you got multi-sided sticks extra fine it gives you the grate in the back Look at that. These are great. Ten bucks, you're going to get one. Two, you're going to get five of them. All different grits. Two-sided. Um, squadron. Highly recommended. You've got to have a good file. You've got to have good uh, sandpaper. All right? Sandpaper sheets. Now, Alpha Abrasives. This is a great company. They make All they make is these little types of uh, sanding bits for the hobby. Um, these are... are all kinds of abrasive. Okay, we have 4,000 grit. I mean, this is good. You're going to sandpaper, uh, wet sand your body of the car. If you clear coat it, then you put another clear on it and buff it out. Beautiful. Look at the grits. 6,000. This is exactly what you want for doing a car. 2,000 and then 1,000. You're going to work your way all the way up, you know, to the fine. But the sheet, this whole pack came with eight. Right here. 320. And then there's all your grits right there all the way up. 12,000. So uh, there's the 12 in the back. It's like it's like glass. <laughs> I've already used a few of these. That's why some are missing. But I got this at Hobby Lobby, and they took the 40% off coupon, which is great. So you got to have you need to have uh, good sandpaper. And these are from Walmart. These are great for getting it down close. These are in the fingernail department. They're spongy. And there's another one. Three kinds of grit. Shit. It even it'll even walk you through it. Removing the the ridges, All right? File the nail edge, remove the ridges, and then there's your polish, you know, your shine. You can actually get your shine through, uh, when you take the nub off with the uh, nippers, you just go into this, two or, two or three of these on each side, you're going to have a shine, perfect. Just like the uh, razor that seems to be making uh, all the fuss now all over the YouTube. Um, you don't really need that. I'm going to show you what you're going to use instead of that. And uh, these, are, uh, these are flexible. These are elastic sanding films. Check these out. These are... Really uh, unique because they're based on uh, uh, an elastic type material, and you can bend these around and they stretch 
and uh, these are really good. These are really good. These, I mean, that's 250 right there, but you can really get in and bend. You, you, they're really soft. If you guys could feel it, you'll understand what I'm talking about. And um, I found these on, uh, I think, Mega Hobby in Jersey has these. I'm going to have to put some of the links down for you guys for some of this stuff. If you want it, you let me know. I'll send you the link. Um, again, not too cheap. Sandpaper is not ex inexpensive. It's cheap, but you need to have sandpaper. It's, it's, a, it's a must own. And so from there, we're going to go to files. I have the Tamiya file set. These are really nice, and they're reusable for a long time. And uh, these get in the spots really good, too. Well, let me see if I can stop using the one that has wet paint on it and go at one of these, you know. So you're going to find the edges you want to get rid of. You can see if it's working. See it right there? It's taking the dust right off. And you can clean these off when you're done. And you get a nice smooth edge. You know, so these are great. And it comes with two kinds in, the, in this pack. And I pick smooth cut because, you know, we're doing a lot of fine work. We're not really sanding down. And it comes with this round one, too, to get into uh, rounded areas. In fact, you can you could probably see the area you'd want to use it in is right here. Yeah. So that's this set. That came with two. You can see the two styles right there. And then this was a cheap set. An Amazon uh, you know, $10 special. You know, this is two of them. I bought two kinds. These diamond cut ones. They're all gold. And these regular ones. And they have nice handles on You want nice handles on them. But you know what? These work really well. And I've used them quite a bit. And uh, the, particularly the more smoother ones. So look on Amazon. You're going to get a set. There's going to be like 10 of them included. Triangle shapes and uh, diamond cut. That's what you want. And I got this this uh, container um, along the way when I got one of my generic sets. And I've been using it ever since to just keep all my files in it. You know, And you're not going to mix up your uh, Tamiya set because they're labeled. So there. So those are recommended. You've got to have files. You've got to have sanding paper and sanding bricks. It's cheap. Load up on them. You're going to use them a lot. You're going to go through them a lot. And uh, highly recommended. Now, as I said before, the riser that makes that's making all the news is a glass nail file. It's all it is. It's a glass nail file. So, make your way to Amazon and look for a glass nail file. Can you see it? This is the rougher one and this is the smoother one. And this is a top notch one right here. This one got highly recommended to me for using on models. It's a glass nail file. Uh, it's going to be hard to show. I'm not set up to show you guys actual work because the camera is set up for me to do more like this. But that's it. It's just it's just a nail file. And it's like smooth, smooth. It's the same one that's in the riser. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the nub off with uh, with the uh, your good nipper. You get it close, and then you're just going to come in with these glass nail files. If you could feel this, guys, it's smooth, smooth as silk right there. Just from that little bit from demoing it for you, you know. And this one is this one came highly recommended. I haven't used it yet. It's, it came in recently, and um, I'm going to do the same thing with this. It's it's the same thing. It's going to take your nub right down, and it's going to buff it right out. You you'd be shocked if you've seen how smooth it makes it. So, and then what you do is you clean these off. With your cheap dollar store um, toothbrush and you can run water under these and clean them every night and that's it you're going to use them for a long time it takes a long time for the glass to wear out so these come highly recommended this came in a set of two and that one came by itself and they were all really cheap that's the only reason I got all three and they're worth having good to have on the bench anything that would do sanding particularly reusable like this worth having on the bench all right Let's move on. Let's get through some more tools here, guys. Some more tools. All right. Speaking of sanding, this is a unique tool. This is uh, from Flexifile. Flexifile. And that's, that's the sanding tool. Can you see it? You hold it like this, and you sand. And that's how you do it. It's that simple. So it forms around it, and now these sheets, these little, uh, these little bands, that you know. And this tool isn't that cheap. This is like twenty bucks for the set, but it's worth it. Here's how you change them: you just squeeze it together, and you pull the band out. That's it. 
That's it. Now look at the set of bands. You can even get an assorted band set, 600 grit. This is an assortment and then another assortment because I was going to use more of those than uh, just the one grit. And that's it. What you do is you, you grab one. It's got a loop in the end. You go in here. You're going to go in here. And that's it. How great is that? That is a nice, nice tool to have. Again, it's not too cheap at 20 bucks, but it's really unique and it's worth it. And it lasts you a while too. You get a lot of bands for uh, for your for your money with the kit, especially if you get this assorted kit. You can break it down and it's easy to change them in and out. Anyway, that's a unique one. I wanted to show you that. That's the Stealth Sanding Frame. And it comes in like that and it comes with a bag of these. So, that's recommended also. Now, glue. My favorite glue is is zap and my favorite glue for the putting the two pieces together is this super thin so this is like a super glue for models and I have every glue there is I it just it's for testing purposes I just I love all these glues you know look at them all I got more hold on look at this plastic magic and uh, I took uh, there's an octagon shaped bottle it's a standard glue where you put the two pieces together and wait from Tamiya I took that out and uh, I put it in this dispenser that they sell, uh, I think at Hobby Lobby. And check this out. You can, it's got its own little needle application. Yeah, look at that. And then the cap has a needle in it that you put in. And it keeps it clear the whole time. And in it, you can see the liquid. I just took it out of the, it looked, it was in a jar like this. But I wanted a more precise application. So what I did was I put it into this, cut the label out and taped it to it. And that's how I ended up with that. So these are all my glues that I like. They're all basically the same. It's whatever one I reach for. One, uh, Certain ones are a little thicker than others. This is the thick one. And um, these are the more thin ones that when you can see it looks, it's like water. These are the ones where you put the two pieces together and, and uh, let it do its job. Now I'm going to show you something right now. Uh, and this is an accelerator. Zap kicker. So this comes with, the, let me get rid of these. I want to show you this. One second, guys. Let me show you what I got. If I put my glues back. Okay. Now, check this out. You're going to get... Bear with me, guys, here. Bear with me. This is a test plane that I use for uh, testing out all tools and whatnot. So you're going to get your glue. All right, it's gonna be, I'm going to do this on camera here, so I'm not really set up for filming like I am, but I want to show you guys. That's it. You can see it. I'm putting some on. Uh, by the way, the zap glue comes with this tip. It comes with it. Okay. Now, this is super glue in and of itself, but still not that quick or fast. If you're trying to get a part that's giving you trouble... Hold on, guys. Let me, close this. Let me get this close to my face so I can get this done. I want to do this. You guys have to see this demo. Okay. Now I'm going to put my little piece here so I can hold it while I get this ready and show you. You ready? This is Zap Kicker. It instantly accelerates. Now, I'm doing it over my bench, but you got to do it over on the floor. It, it evaporates instantly, too. And that's it. It instantly, it's like a, it's like a, almost like an alcohol. See it? It looks like it's staining, but it isn't. So it, it's, it makes, that's it. It's done. It, it's sealed it. It's rock hard. I'm, look, I'm not even, there's the, you can see the glue. It looks like it's wet, but it's not. It's in. I've instantly put the body together. This accelerates it into five seconds of full cure um, using Zap Kicker with Zap CA. And, uh, Highly recommended if you want to build a kit fast. <laughs> if uh, you're building a kit that requires uh, gluing, and you know it looks rough, but again, you know you're going to sand this and whatnot. You know it's a, it's a long seam, so it doesn't matter how it looks as long as you get it together. But that's it. That's Zap Kicker. They're great to have. I'm not quite sure it was ten bucks. It wasn't even. I think it was like six bucks. And um, that's a little uh, little tip there. And the other glues. Let's show you this quick. Quick. This is a glue applicator. Again, this is from FlexiFile, the same guys who did the sanding gadget I just showed you. And that's it. It's basically just a needle. It's basically just a needle. 
that holds a little bit of glue and um, you dip it in here and it leaves you with just a dab of glue and so when you want to put a fine little part in it pulls it right out and pulls it right in so another one CA glue applicator and let's put that back there you go that's another little uh, gadget to help your model building life I also have glue pens these are glue pens this is from mr. hobby one smells like lemon and one's just regular glue but it looks like a, a Gundam marker but it's 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 glue you're gonna just dab where you want to put it it's not the strongest glue there, there it is right there it's not the strongest but it, it's it's neat and uh, it's good for travel you know if you're taking if you're going away and you're going to take a kit you want to build in their hotel or wherever you're going that's the stuff you want uh, speaking of glues here's uh, canopy glue now this is zap canopy glue I love zap and this is evergreen canopy glue well, what it does is it dries clear it's it's a little bit better than Elmer's because it's made for plastic and it'll hold it Elmer's might will actually peel off the plastic it'll get the job done if you're not going to touch it but any movement could lodge it away whereas this stuff uh, zap and everything it's made for plastic models it dries crystal clear when you put a canopy or a windshield in your car a lot of times these glues that I just showed you on here will will leave a hazing this won't it'll dry crystal clear uh, takes a long time to dry but it, it it's um, it's right here three hours for full handling you know which is a long time you gonna have to put it in the place you know go have your dinner come back later you're gonna have you're gonna be very happy particularly with a car window because you're gonna uh, you're not going to have a stained window, and uh, I ruined a few cars with that till this stuff came out. So that's highly recommended right there. And this is a part picker. You know, this, you actually can pick up the, the little pieces. I wonder if I can show you. It's hard to show you because it's made for tiny pieces, but it's like a wax. And see how I'm holding the piece? And this is so you can put little fine pieces in. Now, this is too big. You want to put little, the little glass pieces I have in, in, the, in a Gundam in the eye or something. And it comes with extra wax tips. See that? And this is dirt cheap. This might have been four bucks, five bucks. And that's it. You can replace the tips. Bink. And you put it in place while you're gluing it. How cool is that? All right? And the end, uh, I think this other end is for even finer stuff. So this one's recommended. This is a, a good tool to have. It was really cheap. It's a parts picker. It's a jewelry part picker. I think if you look under, you know, like bejeweling and all that stuff, that's what it comes under. You'll see it there. Um, okay, let's move on here. Um, for primers, we're going to go into more, a little more detail with paints here. Uh, you see me, guys, I'm always uh, painting stuff. And for quick primering, if you're not going to airbrush, you want to get a good primer. My primer of pr choice is this. These Mr. Hobbies in the cans are just great. This is a base, uh, Surface or 100 rather, and this is the Surface 1200. This is gray, and this is white. And I use them all the time on the spoons, and some of my kits too, they work great. Uh, I recommend these above. I get a little bit of a... I'm not crazy about this to me. Now, I'm going to try a different one other than the fine, and I'm going to try the gray. It just it seems to go on a little heavy, and it seems to run a little bit. Whereas this stuff goes on perfect. There's no running. It dries fast. Love this stuff. Pick this stuff out. It's about 10 bucks uh, each one of these. Lasts forever. I've been spraying and doing these tests. How long for you guys? I use these to, to uh, prime the spoons. And uh, I still got, feels like half a can. Now, if you want to spend your money wisely and get a little further, this is the Vallejo that I tested. But I didn't test this because it's just gray primer. Here's the color of it on the, on the can top. See it? It's a flat gray. And this works great too. It has two kinds of nozzles. You want to do fine work or doing a whole wing or like this whole fuselage you want to prime. This works great too. These are 12 bucks or $12.99 a can or $11.99. My other hobby shop has them for. Look how much you're getting on that baby. That's a lot at 10 bucks. And that, you know, this stuff is really good though. This is uh, not quite as meant for primering like this stuff is. But it's, it's good to have, it. particularly you get value for dollar. And it also comes in flat white. So those are the two whites and two grays. And if you really want to save money, you can use this. Um, the problem with this is I, you have to let it run 
let it run. You have to let it dry a long time. And it goes on heavy. You really got to just a quick, quick shot of it. I do some spoons in this too. and stretches me out because I'm doing so much test for you guys that this really uh, gets a lot of bang for your buck. Of course, this is like five bucks, four ninety nine, and this will run you forever. This, is, but it's really heavy, and you got to let it dry. You know, a couple days. You really got to let this dry. But it it does work. It's Rustoleum, who is um, testers actually right now. They own testers. It's probably the same formula and half of the testers stuff. You know. So let me get this out of the way. All right. Gloves, I recommend, particularly if you're building the kit before you want to airbrush it, you want to assemble certain pieces, and then when you're done, you want to put it together. A lot of prints will end up in the on the kit. These black gloves I love because they're skin tight. I need the skin tight glove because I, I can't build the kit proper with a baggy glove, you know. So look at this. Put them on, and that's it. You can build the whole kit. You can airbrush with them. You do everything. Look at that. Now I can feel the piece. You know, let me, see, let me show you. We'll go back to this piece we've been using. But see, I can actually manipulate it and hold it properly because it's like I'm holding it in my fingers. There's no difference. This is what I highly recommend. And buy them small because I have a big hand. I, I, I knew the big ones were just loose. It was defeating the purpose. Buy them a size smaller than you wear. And um, these are 100 for 12 bucks or something, 10 bucks. Uh, I think these are from Amazon. Go, grab the black latex gloves and buy them one size small. Then you build your kit. You won't have a mark on your kit. And then when you're done, just peel them off. And you can even use them inside out to use them twice, you know. So that comes recommended. Another recommendation you have to have is these paint stairs. Now, don't buy a little box. I use these. You guys know how much paint I'm mixing. I use these by the dozens a week. And look how much I still have. Amazon special. Paint stairs. Don't go nuts with the reviews. Everybody says they're this, they're that. Oh, these broke apart. We're, paint, we're mixing paint with ours. We're not doing coffee. So you can't go by the reviews. Um, I just picked ones. Overall, uh, look what I wanted to do. We're going to get here quick. Price was right. Look at the size of the bag. And I, I ordered a bag of these... Uh, these fatter ones, I think these were from uh, a Hobby Lobby because I wanted some of the stuff. I have a thicker, you know, jar of paint. Um, let me show you what I mean. Like these bigger jars of this ink I'm testing. You know, you want to use a bigger stirrer. Yeah. And if you're going to, uh, don't forget, you also have the metal stirrers too. But you can't have. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to avoid hitting the camera. You can't have too many stirrers, right? And here's another must know pipettes. I have dozens here on the desk already. I go through these like mad. You guys know that. So, get these on Amazon also. This might have been eight bucks shipped for a hundred. You can't beat the price. And they show up overnight practically, I think. So, grab these and you grab the paint stairs. They're an absolute must own. All right. You guys see my shelves? I put my, my uh, paint on. You want to get organized. You have to get organized. You guys stuck with me through this this long. It comes with six shelves. You've seen my background. This is what's on the wall. See them? And that's it. It's 25 bucks. You get six of them. This peels off. This is a, a, a protective coating. This See this here? I'll show you. I'll peel it off. See it? You peel it off. And, it, and then you peel off the inside. You get crystal clear. And there's, it comes with all the screws. And I just mount them to the wall. I put a piece of tape behind to give it a little extra. Don't need much because it, it holds up beautifully. I'm in a basement here, so the walls don't matter much to me. I just bolted them to the wall. But these are 25 bucks for six of them. And they come in handy. I've gone through three boxes already because the paint keeps coming in, guys. You know that. The paint keeps coming in. All right. Airbrush. We're going to do this quick. These are my little cleaners for the airbrush. These come free when I ordered with Spray Gunner. And then they sent me these free once, and I love them. It got into... Hold on, guys. Look at this. And when I go in here, can you see the shape of this? And it goes, I'm going to take the needle out. It goes right into that hole, either side. And it comes out all dirty. It cleans everything out. I, I love them. And uh, they're only a dollar for two. I keep ordering every time I go to Spray Gunner, which I do quite often because he sells a lot of paint that I use. But I discovered these, uh, these um, 
these plaque removers for your teeth. And it's, they come in all different sizes. And they're, uh, these are at Walmart. Look at that. It's the same damn thing. It's the same thing. It's a little bigger, but they fit. They still fit. So this is a nice little uh, tip. Go to your uh, local Walmart and grab a couple of sizes and clean out your airbrush with them. They're a little bit... These are a little dangerous because these have a metal end on them. And you start to nick around inside there, particularly these two and $300 airbrushes. You don't want to do that. And they even give you these with the airbrush, and, and they're not great. The other ones were good. These are really good because they're for your teeth. They're sensitive. It's perfect. And there's all different sizes. If you've got a smaller one, you know, I think they might these in all different sizes. Highly recommended. A simple, uh, simple tip there for cleaning out your airbrush. And uh, I'm going to do one more tip here, and I'll wrap this thing up. I got this, you know, I keep my sprues on the shelf in front of me. I, I have a shelf laid out, and I'll show you that in a second. But some of these bigger kits, I have like three perfect grades I got to build, and they're, they're just giant. There's tons of runners. These runner stands, can you see it? You take the stand, it comes with a bunch of stands, and then you got all the letters and numbers. And you can take the stand and you put like A. And you put your sprue here, and check this out. There's runner A. And if it's A1 and A2, it comes with the spot to put the 1 and the 2, and it comes with all the numbers. 1, 2. This was this was cheap. This was a great little... Anything to make the, the, your building life easier and your desk organized, it's for me. So this was worth it. Now, I, I show you... Um, hold on, guys. Here's my shelf. C, D... J, I got all my stuff here. I'm still organizing. But when you build, when I'm building a kit, I put the runner D right there. See it? So it's I left it completely off of my area. And I also have a standard runners. You've seen that in my tips video. But now I saw this because I want to test everything. Now this is its own little thing. Now this really takes up a little space. This is it. Whatever space you need, and you can move them around wherever you want them. And I needed extra ones because, like I said, these perfect grades have tons of runners. So any other extra runners. And every space I can get to hold them and keep them out and not in the box is great for me. So I do recommend these runner stands. Um, USA Gundam Store has these. And uh, they're not expensive, and I highly recommend them. And uh, I'm going to call that it, guys. I think that's enough tips for now. And um, those, are, uh, those are tips and supplies I think everybody should have uh, on their bench and at any cost. I think if you're going to build these things... I think that's the way you should, these are the items you should all have, everything that we've gone through. If you want to ask me any questions on any of them and where to get them, uh, comment below, and um, I will do my best to tell you where I got it from, and I'll try and put up the links for everything. And uh, that's all. And uh, I'm working on another paint test, and I got a few new kits in. Speed Racers Mark V just came in. Uh, I got a bunch of Gundam kits. Oh uh, boy, let's see. I always end up showing you guys stuff at the end of these videos. Uh, Harut from Double O has come in. Ugh. Birder Hunt from uh, Iron Blooded Orphans. This is a fairly new kit that just came in. And this is the kit I've been after for a long time. Hold on, guys. Let's see if I can get this out. Trying to flip it so you guys can see it. My Austin Martin from Tamiya, and these things go for about uh, 200 bucks on eBay. So I was really lucky to uh, find this kit. It's got the full engine. It's got look at all the photo etch parts. It's got terrific model. Uh, anyway, there's even more than that. So we'll go through those in another video, getting them out of the way. Again, I recommend most of the stuff you've seen here. I recommend all of it, but I mean, you guys you obviously don't have to buy it all. You buy a little at a time. I think once your bench has all the items that we've gone through, you're going to have a happy model building life, so to speak. And um, that's it, guys. I noticed what video went long. I had a lot to show you, but um, we're going to see you soon, probably in a couple of days with a brand new test video. And uh, it's going to be a good one. And we'll see you by the weekend.